Hey, in this video, you are going to learn about active support in Rails, how to use it, and why is it useful to you. So what is active support? Well, active support is one of the components of Rails. And if you go to the site, you can find the information that we need, which is everything that's available inside active support. So the first thing we see when we click on active support is that active support is a module. So modules are typically used to put together some, some methods you can include in your code to add extra functionality to it. And you can see that active support itself is made of other modules like this active support cache, active support JSON, and then it also has a few classes. Now we can expand it and uh, look and we can click around and find out about all of these other modules and classes. But the part I find the most interesting and useful of active support is this one that says core extensions. Okay. So if we click here, we open the core extensions, you will see that we find classes like string, range, object, um, kernel, well, kernel is a module, um, file, array. What is this? Well, these are methods core methods, meaning methods that already exist in Ruby without Rails. So they are part of the Ruby programming language itself, but active support adds new methods on top of the already existing methods, right? So that's what's happening here. So array by default, if I have IRB open, by default, in an array, we have methods like size, right? And methods like first. And these methods are part of the Ruby programming language without Rails. You don't need Rails to use these methods. But now inside Rails, since it uses active support, we have new methods like for example, second or without. So if I try to use second here, we're going to get an error. Undefined method second for array. Why? Because this method is not part of the Ruby language itself. It is part of active support. So it's part of Rails. Okay, so now when you are working inside a Rails application, you can use the second method and it will work. Of course, there are other methods like these benchmark methods, which can be useful if you want to time how long it, how long it takes to do something. And some other methods like this, numeric days, bytes, gigabytes, hours, in milliseconds, weeks. All of these methods are part of active support. And if you want to find out what methods are available, just come to this site and click on core extensions and go to the corresponding class. Or you can also search in here by typing the method name. Now, let's see how you can use active support by itself. 
What do I mean by that? Well, Active Support is a Ruby gem, so you don't need Rails to use Active Support. Some people might not know that, but I find it can be useful if you want to use features of Rails outside, outside of Rails. Here is how we can require active support and like this. So you need the underscore, so it's active underscore support, but just doing that, it doesn't require all of these extensions, these extra new methods. So to add that, we need to say require active support core extensions like this, core ext. Where do I get this? Well, if we look here, it says core underscore ext. So that's where that comes from. I know what I have to say is what class I want to extend, what, what class I want to add these methods to. So for example, we can do array. I know I can get an array like one, two, three. And of course I can do first, but I can also do second, which we couldn't do before. And now we can do this because I include these methods from active support. And this is not a race project. I'm just inside a regular RV session without rails. So now we have access to this method. And also if you want access to these other methods, like the date method, we can do that. We just follow the same formula. So we do active support, active support, core extensions, and then the name of the class, so numeric. And now we have access to saying things like one day, three days, and this is useful if, for example, you're doing something like time now plus three days, you can do that. And that's better than you having to find out how many seconds you have in a day or something like that, right? It's more convenient. And that's why active support is so useful and helpful for you. And since we have included this, we have also access to another useful method, which we format the time in a format that's more human readable, like this. So we can say to format S, and we can say short, and then we get this format, 28 of December at this time. And we can do long, and we get this other format. Right, so that's very useful. And if you go to the documentation, so if we type this in here, we can, if we choose the right class, which is below the method name, you can see the different formats that are available. So we use short and we use long, but you can also use long ordinal, or one of these other ones, or you can even create your own custom format. Three methods, so we have seen second, we have seen days, we have seen two formatted S, but there are many other active support methods that you can use in Rails and outside of Rails. So if you're using Rails, you don't have to use this. You don't have to say require active support or extensions. This only, only if you want to use active support 
outside of Rails, which is perfectly possible as, you, as I, just, I just demonstrated. But if you're in Rails, you can just do this directly. You can do because Rails already includes active support automatically for you to make things easier for you. So you can say three days inside the Rails project, you can use this, you can use second or any other of the methods that you will find in this core extension, right? Like this deep dub, which is for duplicating objects and all of these other methods. So that's active support. So uh, you see it's very helpful, very interesting part of Rails that can be used on its own. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video and more people will be able to find the video. Also, if you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos now and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet so you can keep getting more videos like this and visit my website rubyguides.com rubyguides.com in there you will find over 100 free ruby articles and tutorials to help you keep improving your ruby skills and become a good Ruby developer, a great Ruby developer. Thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you in the next video.